What a phenomenal case, seriously guys. There is so many features to this case. I haven't been impressed this much in a long time apart from one other case. This is the Antec Flux Pro. First of all, the implementation of the wood at the front. And it is so clean, guys. But why is it phenomenal, Corey? Well, let me tell you. First of all, we have an open case around the whole outside. There is plenty of breathing. Now, I'll start with the radiator specs. You can fit a 420 millimeter radiator up the top and a 420 millimeter radiator at the front and the front grille is completely removable and can be moved up and down depending on what you want to fit in there. Okay, but that seems pretty standard for most cases. Well, you can remove the power supply shroud covers and have access to a removable bracket down there which you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator on. Okay, what's the big deal there? You can also fit a 240 millimeter radiator down below in the power splash shroud compartment. But how is that possible, you may be asking? Well, let me bring you down below the power splash shroud compartment. The power supply goes in at a 90 degree angle. This is the power supply bracket right here. So none of the cables are running in and onto that 240 millimeter radiator. Now you do have the option of adding in the 240 millimeter radiator or some extra fans down the bottom. I chose to remove the hard drive cages to be able to do that. Or if you're not using hard drive cages, you remove it so you have extra room for your cables to lay. Now on our case, we also have access to visible CPU and GPU temperature display. The case can also fit an EATX size motherboard up to a certain length. I'll leave a link down below so you can check out those a bit further yourself. But Antec has done such a solid job at providing a great reliable case with loads of water cooling options, like loads. If you are sick of this watermark and not being able to utilize all of Windows features, then head on over to whokeys.com. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro key for $16 or a Windows 11 Pro key for $22. Use my code IFR25 for 25% off with loads of payment methods. Copy your code from the user center and paste it here to activate. They also provide you with a step-by-step -step guide and 24 hour support. This case is gonna keep your hardware really cool. But at the rear here, we've got plenty of cable routing spaces. We've got plenty of tires in and around the motherboard tray. And of course we do have holes going through there where you could zip to as well. This section here also had hard drive cages, so that was two more hard drive cages where you could also fit SSDs as well. And we've also got two SSD cages here. There is also a built-in fan and RGB controller. And the case itself comes with six pre-installed white fans. So I think it's only fitting that today we put a full custom loop inside and see what we can do. I'm not gonna utilize every single radiator spot because down below, I'm thinking I'm gonna use that room for cables. And up above here, I'm gonna use that as some nice fresh intake because if I put intake down the bottom here, I could draw air not only through the bottom, but through the whole side of this case as well. Let's get built. Now for our motherboard, this is the Crosshair X870E Hero. Now I've got to say, ROG produced some of the best looking motherboards on the market in my opinion. This all black design is certainly going to fit in well with the water block that we have chosen. We have plenty of USB, lots of USB-C on the rear IO. We now have Wi-Fi 7 as well, and we are loaded up with M.2 support. They've also kept the AM5 socket, so all of your previous coolers will be compatible. But one thing I do want to mention is that I feel like pricing is getting very out of hand not just with this motherboard, I mean hardware in general. I think that consumers are being priced out of the market and that's contributing to a, I don't wanna say dying industry because I, I think people are just having to look for alternatives. They're gonna have to buy the low end or look for secondhand parts, which to me is really a shame because I really want this hobby to grow. I really love this industry and seeing prices go up so much just saddens me because more and more people get priced out especially with how the world is these days i mean inflation at all-time highs and cost of living just through the roof i'm not saying this isn't a bad motherboard or anything but i just think that the cost of everything has gone up so much that people are getting priced out. So eventually, I think if this current trend keeps happening where every new generation is priced so much higher than the previous, I think that's going to eventually affect sales. Some people who used to build PCs as a hobby just can't afford it anymore. Now, I was planning to go all out with the CPU. It was gonna be a Ryzen 9 9950X or something along those lines. However, the CPU was sent to our old address, so, we don't have it on hand, so now I, I have to revert back to 7th gen 
which is still fine. They are great performing CPUs. And so we're going with the Ryzen 7 7700X this time. Now this particular CPU has eight cores, 16 threads. It's a great gaming CPU. And because the new motherboard is still AM5, this CPU is also compatible. Now, for our RAM today, I was unsure of which color I wanted to go with, so I thought I'd just unbox both, try them in the motherboard and see what looks better. Now, this is the Clev Crass V RGB DDR5 RAM. Now, it does come in black and white, but they also have an ROG certified version. Now, a lot of you probably haven't heard of Clev before, but they're now available in Australia, so I really wanted to give them a try. I can also leave a link down below if you guys are curious about their specs at all. Now, I actually did some research on Clev, and their parent company is Essence Core Limited, and they actually are part of South Korea's SK Group. So they are huge in manufacturing memory, and they have lots of expertise in this space. Now the Crass V RGB actually uses SK Hynix ADI chips. So I can expect to get solid performance straight out of the box. However, it also means that we should have plenty of room for overclocking, so it's certainly gonna be something that I will try. It also seems to be pretty rare to have uh, RAM on the market with these speeds, yet such low timings. This particular kit is 48 gigabytes, 6,000 mega transfers per second, and it has timings of CL30, whereas this kit it has the exact same specs apart from it being a 32 gigabyte kit. I will say though, for RAM, these actually have quite a bit of weight to them. It's a nice premium feel and it's also a nice clean design on there. It's not plastered with stickers everywhere or badges. So if you're after some classy RAM for your system, with some built-in RGB that you can leave on or off. You know, you can make it tasteful. I think these are gonna look real nice in the build. One last thing that I forgot to mention with the RAM is that it is also AMD Expo and Intel XMP ready. And because we pull apart our computers a lot of the time, and I swap around my RAM. Having RAM that is compatible with both AMD and Intel meant that I don't need to really worry too much about whether it'll work or not on either platform. So that was also another win when we were thinking about purchasing these products. Now, Clev also has their NVMe drives on sale here in Australia, so I thought I'd pick one of those up as well to test it out. This is the Crass C910 1TB Gen 4 NVMe. Now, this particular model, being 1TB, has a read and write of 5,000 megabytes per second read and 4,800 megabytes per second write. However, if you get higher capacities, all the way up to 4TB, you actually do get an increase in speed as well. Now, in my research, I also learned that it has superior 4K random IOP values. It also has has superior TBW or terabytes written compared to similar products in the same class. Now I wanted to make mention that the NVMe does come with the heat shield not applied. So you can apply it yourself and you can expect up to a 10% increase in cooling when this is applied. However, for us, we are using a motherboard with a built-in heat sink. That's why I have not applied it yet. Let's get it installed. Now, much like how the fans only have a little bit of RGB on them, I also wanted that for the CPU block. Now, we're going with an all accental block with a little bit of RGB there. So this is the EK Velocity 2. The inside itself is nickel plated, it's not just pure copper. However, because the motherboard is still AM5 socket, it means that this is now compatible with the newer gen motherboards. Now, I was tossing up between a white water block or a black one to have kind of like a panda design for this build. However, because the motherboard is pure black, I also wanted to give this CPU block a try because it's pure black as well. Hey, at least the motherboard will stand out in an all white build. Now, I know the case comes pre-installed with some white fans, however, we want to add some RGB or RG-bargy, as one of my mates would say. This is the Unifan SL120, and this is the V2. So we've got a few more features with this fan, but one thing in particular that I'm very happy with is that the fan blades on this are completely white. That means that we're gonna have minimal RGB, so it's not gonna be too overpowering. The RGB actually comes from around the edge here and around the edge here on back end front. 
Now these all do daisy chain together and there is one cable coming off of them for the power and the LEDs as well, which connects to a controller and then to the motherboard. I'm not exactly sure what color I want to do yet. I might play around with that later on, but let's get them installed. Now the case itself, while it can fit a 420 millimeter radiator up the top and a 420 millimeter radiator at the front, it cannot do it at the same time. So you either have to have a 420 up the front and a 360 there, or a 360 up the top and a 420 at the front. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna run two 360 millimeter radiators to keep a bit of uniformity. And we actually found the Corsair XR5 radiators which are completely white. So it was only fitting for this white case. Two 360 millimeter radiators should also be plenty for our RTX 3090 and our 7700X CPU. Now, if everything in this build goes to plan, I should be able to fit my CR360 reservoir pump combo inside. So it has a built-in pump. It's got side ports as well, so I can come out the side or I can come out the front. It also has two rear ports as well, which is great for filling and draining, especially down here. We've got our drain ports and it's got plenty of screw holes all around it. So mounting of this reservoir, you're going to have endless possibilities. Now we may end up changing this. It all depends on how the layout comes together. But by reading the specs of the case, I should be able to fit this in where I want it. Fingers crossed. So I knew that it was possible I was going to encounter this problem. So I've got the CR360. Unfortunately, because the pump is at the rear there, now if there was a gap behind here, a cutout or something, this would work all right. But because there isn't, this is now put in on an angle. I was hoping that there was enough room to put the CR360 in, uh, join it onto the sides here, and it would work like that. But it is way too tall. I can't even access the fill ports really. So now it's almost like this case was built for my next plan. So if I take the CR360 out, I remove these fans. Would you look at that? I have a perfect spot for the CR360 to sit in. Not only that, but I can also drain it from underneath. It's almost like this case was built for it. So now we've got three intake, three exhaust up the top and one exhaust at the side here. And I'm gonna change that fan now because we have access to other fans. I'll change it over to one of these. Now for our graphics card today, I want to make sure I don't fill up much space inside of the case. So that means we're going with a one slot graphics card and we are going back a generation to our RTX 3090. Now by me going back and it taking up only one slot, look how long this graphics card is. It is tiny. So we're also gonna have plenty of room for the custom water cooling as well. Just remember, we're not purely after performance here, even though the 3090 is more than capable of 4K gaming. What I'm really after here is enough room so that we can complete our water cooling loop and fit everything in. I actually had this RTX 3090 in my personal PC uh, before we did the big update with it and the big clean out. So I know it's a good performing card. And with 24 gigs of VRAM as well, we'll be able to run a multi-monitor setup. Now for our power supply, it is only fitting that we go with the white power supply. So we've gone with the Neo Echo. This is a 1000 watt power supply, but when I say 1000 watts, it's 1000 watts of guaranteed continuous power. Antec has also put 10 years warranty on this, so they're certainly confident in their product. They also have eight protections built into this, whereas majority of the power supplies on the market usually had around five to six. The power supply is also fully modular 
and it also has a silent fan inside which has a silent mode built in where it doesn't operate unless it's at certain temperatures. 